Jay Stono here. Check it out what I got today. It's a Sargasm Nudibranch, also known as a sea slug. I've done videos on these before. You, you all might remember when I did the Blue Dragon. That's also a sea slug. This is one very similar to that. Although this one uh, won't mess you up if you accidentally step on it or, or pick it up or something like that. Whereas the Blue Dragon, uh, that can emit some uh, dangerous pain with the nematocyst it can put out, those stinging cells. Uh, this one is pretty harmless, but it looks exactly like all the sargasm that we have washing in. So if I put this up next to this, it blends in almost exactly. And they're, they're actually hard to find because if you're uh, walking around and you're looking around the sargasm, you could look right at it and not even notice it because of, it looks like a blob of just brownish, yellowish whenever it's up on the beach. Now, uh, these sea slugs, they're actually mollusks. So like a snail or clam, you know, one of those things that you find, this is the same way. It just doesn't have an outer shell like uh, you would normally see that a mollusk would have. Uh, there's actually about 200 species of these that are known all around the world. Um, this one, you know, for sure is the sargasm, a nudibranch. Now this one lives within the sargasm and it feeds on hydroids that are growing on the sargasm. These are found all around the world, anywhere where uh, there would be uh, seaweed. So seaweed is, you know, stuff we have washing up right here. There's uh, different species of this as well. So this particular one right here uh, is found in, uh, originates in the Sargasso Sea, which is the Atlantic Ocean and then makes its way through the ocean currents up into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's why it's showing up here uh, in, on the Texas coastline. Now, these mostly feed at the surface, you know, in and around the sargasm on the hydroids, uh, but they have been known to, you know, if they get detached or something like that, they can actually wiggle around. They, they swim erratically, like it's not some kind of fluid looking like a fish gliding through the water. It's like just flapping around, uh, but they can make their way back to the sargasm or they can actually um, go to the bottom and feed on different types of algae, uh, around different types of algae. These get, are, are pretty small compared to some of the other species you'll find around the world. Um, you know, with there being 200 different species of these nudibranchs, there are, there's one that is the largest and that one can get up to 30 pounds. The sargassum nudibranch uh, can only get about four inches. That's its max size. So this one isn't full size. Um, I did find one uh, earlier today that was probably about full size. I'll show some images of that. Uh, whenever you walk up on them and they're just a blob, they'll be moving ar around. And uh, that little four inch one that I found was picking its head up, you know, trying to figure out like what's going on, you know, since it wasn't in the water. Um, but but these can't harm you. Oh man, here comes the water. Okay, I think we're safe. Okay, um, a couple of interesting things about these, how they look. So the head actually has these kind of uh, two antenna looking things, two tentacles. Uh, they're for sensory. They're called rhinophores. And that is to help them uh, with sensory. Now it's got, they have, a, they have four lobes on the back, on their back, and those actually have gills on them. So that helps them breathe in the water, you know, keep them, keep them alive. And it also helps mimic the sargassum where they're at. So less likely chance of them getting eaten by something. And probably fish is one of their main predators. Since they're, since they're at the surface, uh, birds could also be uh, one of the predators, and especially whenever they wash in. So there are a lot of birds along the shoreline right here, and if one of these birds would see, like, like they're all around me right now just waiting for me to drop this thing so that they can come over here and eat it. Some species of these nudibranchs have an ink. This one uh, does not. But some of them, if you go up and you try to pick them up, like the sea hare, that could be like the size of your hand. If you go try to pick it up, it can ink. 
and the ink is not toxic to humans or anything although it will stain so you got to be careful about what you're wearing these uh, are considered hermaphrodites and so they are both male and female um, just like that blue dragon nudibranch i told you about it's the same thing um, but they have both organs uh, male and female and when they lay their eggs it looks like a clear just glob that is on the sargasm and it'll have like a little yellow string in it and th those are the eggs that it lays so really its whole life is right around the sargasm one of the crazy thing is is this one's kind of small to eat but in some cultures around the world they actually eat these things and uh I, with me picking them up and how slimy and stuff they are uh, i'm not going to be one to try this thing okay uh with that i think that's all we got uh, just a really neat animal, and uh, we'll talk to you next time on Beachcombing.